Welcome to this Yuri Retro video. We are going to figure out how to play Pogs. I've got a whole bunch of different brands of Pogs and mill caps. We're gonna go over the rules that come with them and figure out what are the correct rules, what are the variants on rules, and I want to know in the comments below what are your rules to play Pogs. I've been collecting Pogs like crazy, and I'm just starting to go through everything right now, so let's get started with the original pog which is the canadian version i think the u.s version looked a little different we're going to open it up see what's inside and see what the official rules are and for those of you who don't know pogs is a game from the 90s where you use milk caps and you slam down a plastic milk cap at them and they flip over and whichever one flips you get to keep or something like that it started in hawaii and it fizzled up pretty hard by 1999 and why do i like it because i was a kid when it happened and i still remember how much fun i had and pogs you could even play for keeps so the ones you would lose the other person would keep. I think that's why they got banned in a lot of schools. Okay, so here I have a Pog box, which is fully complete. The Pogs that came with it haven't even been pushed out of their, I guess, uh, little holders or whatever it is. Look at that. And this is the Canadian version. I think the other ones just said different stuff and wasn't all like English or French. But we will get to the instruction booklets and figure out how to play. Came with some classic pogs. The platform that you play on, official pog tournament, and this is where you put your pogs and play on top, and you can put your pogs and slammers here. What part of pog don't you understand? Check it out. I guess shout out the mother of pogs, Blossom Galbiso in Hawaii. It's more fun to play by the rules. Whether you decide to play for fun or for keeps, players should agree to the basic rules and weight and thickness of kinis before starting any Pog mill cap game. It's also traditional to shake hands before the game begins. I did not know about the handshake, so we're gonna bring that in. What is a kini, you may ask? I've got this other box right here full of somebody else's Pogs that I've bought. We got a ton of plastic official Pog slammers knockoff plastic slammers even though i kind of think like the knockoff pogs are just as cool if not better we got metal brass slammers and then we also have like yin yang ninja star brass slammers as well and looks like these ones belong to someone named nicola so shout out nicola i got your pogs now so this would just be slammers and then we could also then throw our let's see where's some pogs right over here to hold for whoever's playing. So here we got the official Pog Keenies. It says Pog on the back. I just call them slammers. This is just like a random metal one made in Taiwan. It says the bomb. I love anything with the reflective skull on it. That's cool. And then this is a, a Lunchmate Lunchable Schneider's Slammer. So that's cool. And then for fun or for keeps, I guess keeps, if you lose, those are the Pogs that you end up losing. Now the traditional rules. Each player must contribute an equal number of pogs and mill caps to single common stack. If possible, all mill caps should be stacked face up on an official World Pog Federation game board. We got an official World Pog Federation game board right here. Then I also have this other little kit here, which also has rules and, okay, this doesn't have, there's usually ones with a smaller one that fits in here. Okay, found a smaller one, which I guess technically it would also be part of the rules because it is the World Pog Federation. So we got that as well. To determine who goes first, flip a pog, milk cap, or play Rochambeau rock, paper, scissors. So we got team Batman, team uh, pirate. If it lands Batman up, Batman gets to go first. So Batman, team Batman would go first and we contribute an equal amount. I guess we can just shuffle them in. And face up. Is this stack too big? I don't know. I feel like 10 and 10 is a pretty good number. The first player slams their kini at the stack. All pog mill caps that land face down go to that player. Number three, all pog mill caps remaining face up are restacked for the next player's attempt to flip the stack. Four players alternate turns until every pog has been flipped and won. The player with the most pog mill caps is declared the overall winner. I'm Team Batman. I'm going to use this uh, Batman slammer and I'll give it a go. Nothing. So then I'm team, let's see, skull and crossbones. I'm gonna use this metal yin yang slammer. Metal slammers, that's the, you gotta agree if you can use metal slammers or not. Cause I remember some of them just like straight up denting piles and it's like, yo, you can't be denting the pogs and I'm gonna win from you. So 
So then I would keep the Batman Pog, the Pirate Pog, the Yin Yang Pog, the Dinosaur Pog, and then this uh, Slam Tech Caveman Guy Pog, or Weightlifting Guy. Caveman. Caveman, Yin Yangs, and Skulls were very in. So I take these Pogs, those are mine, and then restack. And let's go Team Batman one more time. Just not enough power with those plastic slammers. So that's something you have to worry about too. And then also when you have like one slammer left or one pog left, it's super hard to flip that. Gets tricky at the end, but it's doable, it's doable. All right, now we do the World Pog Federation tournament rules. Fun fact, we went to the World Pog Federation, you know, qualifiers or whatever at Ontario Place, and my brother ended up winning the first day, so we had to come back, and he got a Pog with his face on it, a slammer with his face on it. Uh, we can't find it. It exists somewhere, but it was super sweet. These just for fun rules are endorsed and followed in an official tournament sanctioned by the World Pog Federation. Each pair of opposing players Starts with a single stack of 11 Pog Classic Milk Caps. And I believe these are Pog Classic. So they're the ones with like their uh, fuzzy texture on the back and they like say classic and they have classic style milk cap art and stuff like that. And I feel like I do remember this being what we played. And sometimes there's staples in them and like the indents of like what an actual milk cap looked like. So yeah. I guess this would be the official rule pogs, these kind only. Each pair of opposing blah, blah, blah. The first player throws their key at the stack. All mill caps landing face down are added to that player's score. Players alternate turns. The first player to flip six mill caps is the winner of the round. So you don't get stuck going down to the very last one. Interesting. The first player to win three rounds wins the match or game. Note, in some tournaments, a time limit is also imposed. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know about that. I don't remember that. It sounds kind of familiar. I do kind of remember like, you know, Maybe it didn't go all the way, but uh, interesting. So WPF rules, we can uh, set that up if we ever do a tournament to keep it nice and short so you're not stuck slamming that last one. Uh, Pog Baseball, we can save for another day because there are also other fun games and stuff. I, I've also got like a Pog Casino Night so that there's like, I don't know, play all your favorite card games Pog style. So uh, yeah. We can say that for another one. There's also like Donkey Kong Pog. There's Hockey Pogs. Uh, I guess there's Baseball Pogs too. So we're not, we're not into that today. Just normal Pogs. Schoolyard style. So from here, we're going to double check this little Pog handbook to see if the rules are exactly the same. Oh, it's like a full out poster. Uh, yeah. Looks like the rules are the same and on the back this is what the u.s pog box look like so that's pretty cool and on the back of a pack of pogs it'll also tell you the rules which are how to play each player stacks an equal number of pogs flip a pog first player to slams an official kini all pog mail caps landing face down go to that player restack remaining pogs player takes alternate turns whoever flips the most pogs wins the game one of the great things about pog is inventing your own games have fun and be creative, keep on pogging. Uh, let me know if you've created your own rules and what they are. Same rules and we got another little pog card rule. Exactly the same. So now let's check some of the other ones to see what the rules are there. Next up, let's take a look at uh, Slammer Whammers and see what the rules are there. They're on the back and this one says the players each place an equal number of slammer whammer cabs face up in a stack. Flip a slammer heads or tails, or use another method to determine who goes first. A player with the most poison or skulls gets to go first. Okay, poisons or skulls, there we go. The first player throws a slammer down on the stack and keeps any slammer whammer caps that flip over. The remaining slammer whammers are restacked, and the next player throws his slammer down on the stack, keeping any slammer whammers caps that flip over. The players take turns until all the slammer whammer caps are flipped over. The player who flips over the most caps wins the game. So uh, pretty much the same rule except for now if you have skulls and poison in your game you get to go first. Before we move on we got crazy caps. Uh, look at these. 
nice and yellowed out. And the rules say each player stack an equal number of skull caps face up. Flip a coin to see who goes first. First player slams the top of the skull caps with an official Z slammer. I like how everyone was making it like, you need to play by our official rules with official Z slammers and slammer whammers and pog classics. All caps landing face down, go to that player, restack the remaining caps. And the second player takes a crack at the stack. The player with the most caps after the winning pieces are flipped over is Z winner. Oh, that's clever. Make up your own games and don't be the last to have a blast. So that's pretty cool too. All right. Z winner. Same rules. And next, let's go to a couple more like just like weird knockoff stuff. So we got classic caps, sl slam, and rock. So uh, the rock ones. Each player plays the same amount of caps. Five is recommended for each player. Okay, that's our first like recommendation besides official rules for the WPF. Flip the slamming rock trademark for a heads or tails call. The winner gets the first toss of the slamming rock at the stack of the caps arena. The winner of the toss places the slamming rock on his or her index and forefinger. With one motion, the slamming rock is directed towards the stack of caps on the arena and is released just before contact. Okay, so this is our first official direction on how to throw pogs because before slammers, because before like, we don't know if we're throwing like this, if we can throw straight down or if we have to flip like this or do the two finger shabam. So this was on his or her index and forefinger. Index and forefinger, all right. Or is it like this, and then you have to do a flip and let go right before. Caps that have been hit by the slamming rock and have been flipped upside down may be claimed by the slamming player. The remaining caps are stacked in the center of the arena and the second player takes his or her turn on the slamming rock. Any overturned caps are then claimed by the second player. The process is repeated until all the caps have been overturned. The player with the most caps is the winner. Upper Stack Inc. presents the highest level of caps and supplies exciting game that combines playing and competition. Games can be played with as few as two or as many as seven players. Not eight though. Not eight. Rocks can be played over and over. Or players can keep the caps they've won. Okay, so that was our first rule with how to place fingers. So that's cool. Let's check out classic caps. No cap is played with two or more players. Everyone should review the rules. Everyone. Each player contributes equal amount of caps to the stack. All caps should be stacked arts side up into a straight, even column. Determine who goes first, players take turns after the other. All right, no specific way to pick who goes first, that's interesting. Each player uses a slammer, very vague. A player's turn is a throw of the slammer to the top of the stack. The throw is an attempt to flip over as many caps in the stack as possible. All caps that land arts side down are the player's winnings. The caps remaining are restacked into a straight, even column. The next player takes a turn. Players continue until the very last cap is one. Okay, cool, cool. Let's check out these rules here on Salam. This looks much newer. The object of the game is to win the most milk caps. Players place an equal number of caps into one stack with the art side down. Ah, oh, this is our first one where we're going art side down. I prefer art side down because then when you slam it down, you're not actually like leaving a mark on the art. Slammers tossed heads or tails to determine the first player. The first player then tosses the slammer down on the top of the stack of mill caps. Caps that flip over showing the art side up are won by that player. See, that's how I like to play. So shout out, slam, slamming. The remaining caps are restacked and the next player takes a turn. Each player continues to take turns until all the caps are won. So far, I think Rox is the only one that says his or her. Maybe Pog said that as well. So, okay, cool, cool. And now we got a box of power caps. And this is actually my pride and joy of my collection. I got this at a thrift store a long time ago and it is fully complete. Nothing is punched out from this whole set. So here, let's fully zoom out and take a good look at it. Also, I love the artwork. These kids playing look like they're having a great time. Very, very 90s. All right. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so we have Two sealed in-box power caps play mats that are pretty much perma-bent, which, you know, that kind of is okay, but lucky for us, I have a 
perfectly flat power caps pad as a backup, obviously. And then it came with all of these pogs or power caps. So yeah, check that out. All shiny. They're all skulls and cool stuff. We see the art bleeding past just the pog, which you won't get if you, you know, pop them off. So that's very cool. I'm going to keep these sealed up right here. Came with this awesome power caps tube. Love that carrying case. And wait, where are the rules? They did not come with a rule book. Or are the rules on the back of, oh, am I going to have to open this to read the rules? Instructions for power caps, number of players, two or more, determine player sequence and the distance to the universal power caps alliance play mat. Each player throws the same amount of power caps to the mat. Try to aim for the inner circle. Player with the most caps in the inner circle wins all caps landing on and outside the mat. You can create your own games. Each player throws the same amount of power caps to the mat. Try to aim for the inner circle. So say I throw four to the inner circle. Player with the most caps in the inner circle wins all the caps landing on and outside the mat. So is this like a weird rule game where you're like, oh, they, they fell out of the mat. I don't get to keep them. So like if I did that, I would lose that. You can create your own games. Anyways, this doesn't make any sense. All right, for you guys, I'm gonna ruin this scotch tape here. And we're going to, oh, that'll go back nicely. Okay. These have never seen the light of day before, so we got some pretty sweet skull slammers. And we got rules on the back. Let's see, are the rules different than on the back of this? Same rule, okay. So the rules for this one are, each player piles the same amount of power caps, mill caps face down, okay. Determine player sequence. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh no, this one goes first. From the same distance, first player starts by throwing a power cap slammer at the stack. I love, so far I like how power caps is caps face down. First player gets all the caps landing face up. Restack balance of caps for the following players. Player with the most caps at the end wins. You can create your own game. So the rules on the box were wrong. The rules on the power caps pack were actually correct. So shout out, shout out that correction. Now we have to put this mint condition stuff back in its package. We do have these no fear pogs. Let's see if those will have uh, any instructions on them or in them. No, they just straight up give you pogs. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking too much space. We got the uh, Trone Gold Cap World Cap Series 2, 1994. Be sure to sign up. No instructions. This was from the July 19th to 24th in 1994. Sports Card Memorabilia Expo. Cool. So no instructions on this. Can we even can we see inside? No, that's sealed up good. Okay. Got a box of crazy caps. Play the milk cap game. Uh, it's sealed up. Okay, we got some rules here. Each player stacks an equal number of crazy caps and milk caps. Art side down. All right, art side down. Flip a crazy cap or coin to determine who goes first. Very specific. No rock, paper, scissors. The first player takes a crazy cap slammer and throws it at the top of the stack. All caps. They flip over and land at the game board face up. On the game board. Oh, so if it goes off the game board, face up, go to the player, remove the flip caps from the game board, and restack the rest of the caps. Alternate turns between players until all the caps are flipped over. These are basic game rules. Any other rules are acceptable as long as agreed upon. So I think that's like the main takeaway is that everyone is cool with rules as long as everyone else who's playing is cool with those rules. Okay, these are uh, cheese string pogs. We got the cheese string logo right here. But it's also Pog Federation, so you have the it's the same Pog rules, so nothing special there. Okay, let's see if uh, TKO Super Slammer plus five caps has any rules on the box. No, it looks like any rules would be inside, so we don't know anything about that either. Okay, I found two more rules, and then I'm going to Google the rules of playing with Poison Pogs. So first we got Slam Tech. 
with a cool uh, looking uh, Raptor up here. Very sun faded. The milk cap game is played with two or more players before starting the game. Decide if you're playing for fun or for cubes. Start the game. Each player stacks an equal number of milk caps face down. Flip an official slammer head slammer to determine who goes first. A player's turn is a throw of an official slammer head slammer. At the stack of the milk caps. All milk caps landing face up. Go to that player. Restack the remaining milk caps for the next player. Take players take alternate turns until all the milk caps are flipped. And the last cap is one. The player with the most flipped milk caps wins the game. Ask for slammer head slammers. The one with bite. All right, that's pretty straightforward. So we gotta think like an equal number of face down, face up starting, but I guess face up, if it's pogs, is like the real rule because pogs is pogs. And then we got slugs, so let's see. These are the cool ones that like change when you move. Each player stacks an equal number of slugs face up. Flip a slug to pick the first player. First player slams the slugs. All slugs landing face down go to that player. Stack left over slugs and the second player slams. The player with the most slugs at the end becomes the slug master. All right, slug master, that's a cool term. Now we are going to look up the poison pogs rules because I remember reading about that and I found that very interesting. So this comes from a Reddit thread from two years ago. What are the rules regarding poison caps? I'm aware that there's some house rules regarding caps labeled poison or with skulls or such iconography. Poison caps had a lot of rules. The only rule I actually know is flipping a poison cap gets you all the caps from that round of throws, both yours and your opponents. There were others like double poison and such, but I can't recall any of them. All right, that's a pretty sneaky way to just get a whole bunch, just slide a poison in there. But I guess you could lose them all too that way. We play that if you put a poison in and if someone flipped your poison, you got the pogs. There was also a pog that we made a rule. If you flipped it, you got the whole stack, but the rule caused the fight. I want to say that we tried to make one for the eight balls too, but I don't remember. Okay, so I think this goes back to make your own rules and have fun. The poison seems to do a lot of like stealing and stuff. When we played, they were more significant and they would only be put into play against other poison pogs. When a couple of guys threw down some poisons, you knew things were getting serious. So I guess like poisons were maybe the most desirable ones. I, I always thought those were the coolest as well. So, well, I hope you like that deep dive into pog rules, mill cap rules. I think my favorite variation is the World Pog Federation rules where you play first to flip six wins, first to win three rounds wins. And besides that, just traditional rules where equal amount flip and I'm gonna go face down is my preferred method but I'll do whatever anyone else wants to play and I guess maybe next video we'll either get into crazy bones and the rules of crazy bones or how to slam your slammers different slammer techniques because like we got to dial that in you can't just be launching metal slammers like this just straight down denting a full pile like we got to we gotta explore what works, what works best, what doesn't work, and what kind of techniques. Let me know in the comments below. See you next time on Yuri Retro. Look at all that stuff I have to explore. We got a lot.